Good day, everybody. My name is Dana Massett, the Mindful Mama podcast. I'm a shaman and psychotherapist in the Chicagoland area. And today I'm going to have Mark, the Midwest medium. And we're just going to have a little chat. We do this about once a year. We basically come from the same area, from the same community. He's a Chicagoland native, just like I am. He provides spiritual guidance to many around the world in the form of readings or teachings on topics such as healing, psychic, mediumship, and even astrology. Mark has even made an appearance on the television um, show Black Ink Crew in Chicago and even on the radio. Mark is also on social media outlets, as he believes passing down the knowledge to the next generation. So let's get started. Welcome, Mark. I'm so glad you hopped on with me today. Oh, I'm so excited to be here and to chat with you. So thank you for asking me. Awesome. So one topic that has kind of been like hitting me hard lately, or maybe like triggering me, is trendy spirituality. We're in a different time. And it's like even like really young people are getting into spirituality. And I think the meaning of spirituality, um, it's kind of like we're we're forgetting like the meat of it. Like how, what are you picking up on? Uh yes, 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 yes. All that <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um somehow spirituality has been I mean, I guess it's been a slow build, um, but it's it's definitely, I don't know, commercialized is one way of looking at it. I think that um, we all know we live in a day of age of instant gratification, right? Yeah. And spirit, <laughs> spirituality somehow is is now, it's, they've overlapped or they've become one because um in today's day i think when i look at social media and people that post something that's supposed to be i don't know spiritual in their eyes it seems very surface level or feels it, it feels like um it's just sort of something to pass the time or or to have a little short term joy um i know they they've talked about this um wise people in all cultures throughout time they said you know, it's one thing to have the spiritual experiences that bring you fun or joy or bliss in that moment, but you're supposed to have philosophy and you're supposed to have meaning and you're supposed to, you know, there's other deeper things here. Both are essential, um, but it seems like that has kind of gone by the wayside and it's just, it's just, uh, oh, this is kind of cool oh, it's kind of fun, this experience or that experience, or I went here and I did this. And it's it's all exper experience rather than having anything additional like the philosophy or integrating. And there's a lot of hard work that goes into becoming, um, leveling up in your spirituality, I guess you would say. There's a lot of dirty work. And that's, that's I don't see that at all on social media. Totally. So, yeah, no one's getting their hands dirty, I think. And you're, you're totally right. Like I'm following you. It's like we dip in, we have this spiritual experience, whether it's, we go have a retreat, plant medicine is on like the uprise right now. We go into the sweat lodge, we meet a shaman in Peru or locally, um, or even just go to a full moon ceremony, but then they leave there and they're not changing their personality. They're not working on their mental health. And that's like you said, that's the dirty work. That's like, okay, your trigger happens. You just got all this wisdom from the seven day retreat and you're not slowing down to use it. So what's the point? Save your money. Yeah. Uh, well, they'll say, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I look back and I know there was some like yogis out there that used to talk like this. They used to say, we know it's going to happen. There's going to be these experiences, but no follow up. There's no flaw. There's no integration. There's no anything to sustain you in the long run. So just be aware even though we know it's going to happen and here we are. Uh, the yeah. other interesting thing is like, I always like love to look at different cultures. They're wise people, whether you call them medicine men, medicine woman, whatever you call them. Um, and they all have always the same, the same concepts or the ideology where they knew this was going to happen and they're warning against it. But the mental health thing is, is something that me and you have in common. I worked in yeah. chemical psych and you have the background. Um, 
they would say in other cultures that if you are a spiritual seeker, you know, that your rite of passage will be a day where they would say you would face insanity, but we know that as the shadow self. And yeah. we mean you know that as working on your emotional IQ now. And they would just say, well, you'll face insanity and hopefully you come, <laughs> hopefully you survive it and then you're wise. And um, I think what's happening is instead of that, we're getting high off of the retreats, we're getting high off the plant medicine, we're getting high off of the vacation, we're getting high off of twin flame and we're getting high and then we'll wait, we'll wait five days or a week and then we'll get high again off these things and then we'll get hot. We'll just keep doing that as band-aids and then, uh, and then fall down again and wonder why, and then do it again. Instead of, as you would say, and I would say, working on your emotional IQ or integrating your shadow self. Um, you know, to me, I keep saying to people like those things, like the retreats, the plant medicine, the meeting people that are your soulmates or twin flames, they keep thinking that's going to elevate them to be more intuitive, to be more spiritual, but it's really the emotional stuff. And they even said that thousands of years ago, they said, if you work on your emotional IQ, that's where your intuition rises, because then you get to differentiate between uh, impulse and intuition. So. Totally. I don't know. My screen went crazy for a second. Probably scared. Um, I know it happens sometimes. <laughs> it's, it's funny. Um, contradicting beliefs. We don't slow down enough to see if these two beliefs that I'm speaking about or reading about, or my community are talking about if they're clashing. So it's like, okay, we talk about seeking wholeness and ascension and enlightenment and oneness, but then we're also saying that, oh, you have to find this person, it's like the other half of your soul. So that means you're not whole. So it is, it is, you totally right that people are like chasing this high and spirituality has become the high as well as technology, as well as sometimes plant medicine. All these things are beautiful things used the proper way. Yeah. Uh, I, I did a YouTube video where one of the shamans, I think it was from Mayan culture was interviewed about, um, POD and, and ayahuasca and stuff like that. And he said it was really to remind the people about their own power because they were losing it. They lost the knowing that their power resided within them, their divinity. So we gave that to them just to just to like a reminder. It wasn't supposed to be every day or every month or every you know two months. And I go, um, it was only supposed to be sort of this reminder, and then that should have been enough for them to to go on and then sort of integrate that. Uh, I'm I'm with you about the whole other half thing. Uh, I look backwards in Greece, they used to have a ceremony where you would connect to your higher self, but you would have to integrate your shadow self right before. And that was that. And they, you could have a lover, you could have a romantic soulmate with you in the ceremony, but most of the time you were by yourself. And that's where like that twin flame thing comes. Yeah. And then it, that changed, though, when Rome came and, and the Romans kind of wanted it to be two people. And so it, it kind of goes back to like when people talk about um, Christian mysticism, where there was the outer, the, like Christ was the outer, but there was an inner, too, that you were supposed to understand that you, too, had this divine power within you. And then that got lost. Um, so I almost feel like sometimes some of these things they're almost weaponized to keep us only so so far in our intuitiveness or so far but you know it's not complete and I don't think that's the whole that, that was ever the whole story um about finding somebody your other half and all this other stuff um it's great to have someone else to help and and share a life and you're both spiritual and both grow but I think uh, a lot of it has gotten lost from its original meaning, like, and, and you, you agree. Yeah. And the other thing you talk, talked about is about how about two concepts and being able to use some sort of just dis discretion and be able to figure out, is this true for me or is it not? And we don't do that. Right. Right. <laughs> we never do that anymore. Like you just said, nobody's taking the time to go, well, how about this concept and this concept, oneness and finding my other half, 
of my soul was lost. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> These two don't make sense. Like one of them has to, so. I, I think our happiness has really gone down. So people are clinging to these fantasies or quick fixes. So I don't think people want to let go of the fantasy that there's a twin flame or a soulmate or this like magic pill, which could be in the form of like this sacred um, medicine ceremony. But even marriage, I always remind people that marriage is kind of like a business deal. Like marriage was first created really for like business, for the foundation of the family. It got romanticized and it's fine that it got romanticized, but we have completely forgot the initial foundation of even marriage and it's way too romanticized and even sexualized. And it's, we've like lost the true intention of so many things. And again, I think we're just constantly looking for that dopamine hit. And funny enough, we can get those dopamine hits by ourselves inside through meditation, through physical fitness, um, through drumming by ourselves, through music, through the foods we eat. And we're just, we're so externalized. Yeah. Uh, every day I have multiple times throughout the day where it's, I take two minutes of silence. And then of course I go for a walk. 30 minutes I do my exercise so there's just so many of that but yeah when you have now social media that's like dopamine <laughs> dopamine 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 it's not helping so uh yeah it's it's now it's like well on one hand these things have helped us have conversations yeah listen then we get to on the other hand it's you're right it's kind of it helps us a little but then it hurts us because it's always external dopamine hits and all these other things so um, but I think this is the beginning of maybe changing some minds. So like a conversation like this, and I'm hoping that others will hear it and go, oh, that's a good idea. Maybe, maybe we'll have these conversations. Yeah, like maybe I'll try that. And it's balanced. It's like, it's awesome that these phones have like where you can put the parameters, like, okay, only allow me to be on like Instagram two hours a day or whatever, which sounds crazy. And it is adults need to do that too, because these devices were formed to be addictive, just like gambling, you know, they were purposely created that way. Now for the younger generation, that is definitely probably in the worst mental health crisis. How do you see us like getting out of that? Like my opinion of how we got here is like, we have this coddled generation. So it's it's our fault. It's the parents' fault that have raised these kids, coddled them too much, protected them too much. So it's like the helicopter parenting generation gave them too many accommodations. Also, both parents typically working, so not around to like really raise them. So society has basically raised these kids. How do you see us getting out of this? It is so bad. Yeah. And sometimes I sit here and I'm like, I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. Um, well, two things. Either the kid will have to seek it out. or It would be ideal that the parents first go and maybe think about some sort of counseling or psych some kind of psychotherapy or some sort of mental health um, assistance. I know it's not for everyone. And, and there's, you know. Yeah. Sometimes you have to go through a bunch to figure out, will this counselor work or don't? If you're not going to go down the route of counseling as a parent, then maybe you have to go do your own self-study. Yeah. And so you like uh, develop critical thinking skills, try to go through that. Um, I offer things too personally, uh, the shadow self integration. I, I have a, a self-study on critical thinking skills, the importance of emotional IQ, and I use a lot of my social media for mental health um, messages and inspiration and like pretty much begging everyone, please do it. Because we know that if you can educate, especially, you know, especially if they're younger, um, it's like prevention, you know, and that's, that will, if, if we can start to succeed that way and we have these preventative steps with the next generation, then their kids won't be in such a bad place. Um, right. It's like 50-50 with the parents now. Some of them will say yes, some of them will say no. Um, so, but I can tell you that uh, when I do readings, what would happen is um, I would pick up on a kid who was not doing so well in school and wasn't happy and all that. And I knew it was 
like most of the time it was both parents that were fighting or there's problems and they were both in denial. So it's like, well, if the parents are in denial that they're affecting the child, then the child has to wait till they're like an adult to fix it because they're like, huh, what am I going to do? Like no one's. So that, that was the most eye-opening thing for me over the last 20 years, to be honest. I couldn't believe how many times I would run into that. Or the, or the parent would blame the other parent. Well, it's not me. It's got to be the other parent. It's like, mm, it's actually you that, you know, the child is, is picking up on these things. And how you raise the child is so important, especially in those developmental years. Um, but we have hope, you know, as, as bad as social media can be, as, as we've talked about, at least it's a resource now, um, you know, for these kids who may not be able to ask their parents, can you please take me to uh, therapy? And they say no, or whatever the case may be, maybe they can use the internet to self-study that way. And, you know, uh, right. I think to, to be, to lift the stigma, there's a giant stigma still on mental health, which is, you know, oh, so from me and you, we both worked in psych it's like, how could there still be a stigma? But there still is. I know. I forget. <laughs> I seriously forgot because you're you're kind of like in this world, this accepted world of it that you forget that there's still a stigma. Yeah. So when you bump up against it, you're like, what? Yeah. Um, what comes to me is the word narcissist. Oh my gosh. That's <laughs> it is. One is a narcissist. Your dog and your cat are both narcissists. Like, how did we get here? It, <laughs> it, used, it used to be ADD and ADHD was the label. It's still kind yeah. of now narcissist has become more popular as the as the new word. <laughs> and that feeds into like victim uh, yeah. consciousness, though. And like my friend gave me that term because like victim mentality can be very triggering. Mm -hmm. Um victim consciousness a little bit easier to sit with if we're pointing the finger at everybody like oh these are the signs to look for and this happened to me and he's a narcissist or she's a narcissist let's turn it back to ourselves why did I attract that what inside of me attracted this type of person and just focus on the qualities we don't need to have this umbrella label because yeah. even if we go with narcissists each person is unique yeah you know but it's what's your take on that What's a broad, like I worked in clinical psych and I had one person that had clinical narcissism, like real clinical. It's like, you can't, you yeah. weren't going to say anything to them. Like, so I know what clinical narcissism looks like when you're not even capable of living on your own or functioning in society at all. So when I then come out of there and go to social media and see all, I'm like, that's, that's your take on narcissism. Okay. That's weird. Cause that's not really narcissism, but, uh, but I agree with you. It's, um, I think people are now using it as an excuse. Um, and, and there's, it's a wide, 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 wide spectrum of, of narcissism anyways. And then that's not helping. So, um, I would say if you know that that's the case, then you have a good set of eyes to be able to identify who you need to be around and where your uh, boundaries are. So if you're going to, you know, you could just keep wasting your breath and your time and your energy on this person, bad, 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 they're bad, they're all bad. Or if you can identify it, then you should be able to identify those that will be in your life as, as cheerleaders, as I always say, and those that want to see you uh, and support you and, and, and be there for you and you vice versa. And it's a great, great reminder for you not to engage in those actions that you don't like if you don't yes. like what they did to you then you then use that as a daily reminder okay i won't do that to these people who are sweet to me so Absolutely. like use it to your advantage and stop wasting time you know um because it's not what's it going to do you just you're just wasting time and then you know you wake up one day and it's like oh it's all over right, right. <laughs> are we just like attracted to victim consciousness Oh yeah. Because it's easier. It's, 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 um, it's way easier to do that than to actually look at yourself. You know, um, every light worker, this is what I always say, every light worker, whether you call yourself an empath, a healer, whatever channel or shaman, psychic medium, blah, blah, blah. 
you have to go through, you face your shadow self, and that is, yes, a little bit of the victim that happened to you, but what did you do to other people in the world? That isn't good. And what did you ignore? So it's only like a tiny part of the whole thing to, in order to become whole again. And I, I really believe we come back to this world to fix this. This topic right here is the only way we restore harmony back. Uh, and then until we until we get that right, we're just going to keep coming back and 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 back. Right. And that's the way it is. And that that's what was told thousands of years ago. Um, so we have a giant responsibility. I think that people, too, think that when I talk to them, they think life is supposed to be fun and, and those things. That, but that's half of it. I think there's fun life fun and responsibility to restore harmony and that is a missing part and they don't think they're special or whatever it's like no it takes a village like you're gonna have to chip in <laughs> you're right gonna, so right. whatever you have to do to realize um that you're not uh, perfect in your life you've, you've done things to hurt others maybe it was unconscious that's fine uh, but what are you going to do? And if if you have lived a perfect life and you've never hurt anybody, then what are you doing to give that knowledge to the next generation? If you are, Absolutely. if you are perfect and you've never, <laughs> yeah, because that? yeah, that's put, crazy. Yeah, put the books out. If you're perfect, please tell us the equation. That's fine, right? That's fine. <laughs> and and you know, let's say that it's possible, and there's a, millions of perfect people. You're still not doing enough if you're not giving, you know, if your actions have always been holier than thou, then where's that at? Are you giving that away? If you're right, because before you leave, you do, you do owe it to yourself. And I think you, we all make a, a decision before we incarnate that we're here to love, to experience love and give love, but we're here to also have that responsibility. You hear all these medicine men and medicine women talk about how important it was for them to teach to give back before the you know especially yeah. as they get older but that was supposed to be for all of us and that's gone it's like no I'm, you know i got family work vacation that's life it's like mm. yeah why why did it stop and it is getting worse because the younger generation and definitely we're responsible for this but i can't really understand how it all came together is like Purpose equals fun and comfort mm -hmm. versus I would say in our generation, we knew purpose equal discomfort for sure. Yeah. Basically, if we were going to make a life for ourselves or find purpose in our life, we knew it was going to be an uncomfortable journey. Yeah. But now we're over here and anything that feels uncomfortable to them or isn't fun is a no. Yes, it is. Does it's it come true. from the parents, would you say? Absolutely. There's no okay. doubt. And it comes from their parents. Yeah. Their parents. <laughs> because it's easy. It's a lot easier. Yeah. So we're so off track. Well, the good thing is like internet and social media, is, it, we save time. You know, so that's, you know, it's accelerating. Hopefully we should be able to learn these things quicker than the generations before in a faster pace. So, you know, it's like, they can keep making excuses all they want, but if you told people three generations ago you have you have this ability to talk to someone around the world, they'd be like, "Oh my god, that's crazy technology! You guys must be able to fly to Mars and back every day." It's like, oh, what is, "Do you guys live in a utopia?" It was probably the next. Oh no, we still we, we identify people as narcissists, so we don't. Live. <laughs> <laughs> right right there's still yeah, a lot of division and we we get we have these dopamine thing hits uh everywhere we, we look so no we're and they would say well you guys lazy it's like yeah yeah right. yeah obesity is the highest it's ever been yeah <laughs> so stop being lazy people i guess you'd say yes well okay this brings me into mother earth um and a little snippet before we dive into it i have a friend who um she's thinking about moving and so she's checking out different places she lives in chicagoland so she went to mexico and she has like digestive issues which a lot of us do and she goes to mexico and it's like she's 100 percent, no ailments good to go she feels great she can eat anything 
she comes back to Chicago and it's immediate. It's like all the issues come back. So my thought was, um, it's almost like going to Mexico, you return to the land and they're mostly, not perfectly, but respectful of the land. Mother Earth first, humans behind. You come to Chicago, it's humans first, Mother Earth doesn't even really exist and who cares? But what's your take on that? How even different places feel different energetically to that extreme? Yeah, I'm lucky that I got a real nice forest right by me because I walk through and I feel like I'm in a different planet um but oh my gosh yes 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 uh you know if you talk to anyone who is from a different culture that has these spiritual teachings they would say the importance of your foot touching mother earth every single day and walking is so important it's it's basically their religion because it does so many things. One, it reminds you that the earth is a living thing and without it, we don't exist. So it takes care of, takes care of us. It has a spirit and we have a spirit. And if that's true and we need each other and we are connected, then we're all in this together. So there comes oneness. So if that's true, then why on earth are we are we so separate? So, okay, so if you take that away when you're not walking in nature, then that, that reminder is gone, that we are more separate. Um, <clears throat> then obviously there's a lot of health benefits, as we all know, you know, 20 minutes decreases your depress uh, depression, anxiety, stress, cortisol levels, blah, 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 on, 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 Right. Um, they would also say that just, you know, uh, any ceremony you would you would do with with dry paint and all that you would stand barefoot they believe you would connect to spirit the holy people as they would say uh so i mean all these things are lost and they're daily reminders they're not six month reminders they're right. not you know, uh, like you say because we're both from chicago you do your job and you you know you go to sleep you wake up go to job you know and then go to the retreat and then come back and it's like, that's not a daily anything. Um, so I have a, I'm lucky that I don't really skip, even if it's cold, I go and walk and, uh, you know, um, I'm so connected and I see t animal totems, uh, animal medicine, you know, all these other things. Um, but without it, <clears throat> without it, I, I'm, I'm just not the same. So I would say we, we have severed the link to spirit. And I think the original church was nature. Yeah. And, and so, you know, how do you how do you remind yourself that we're all one without these little reminders? It's impossible. And how do you connect to your own divinity, divinity without these things? You can't. <clears throat> so I, I'm, yeah. I'm glad for your friend, you know, um, but I would say for the rest of us, figure out a way to to have your own place, your own sacred place, because you know, a walk every day slowly, and in my opinion, without talking or using the phone. Yes, <laughs> yes. talk to, I talk to so many spiritual people that go, they go for a walk and they're talking out loud. They're on the phone. I'm like, what did you do? You didn't do anything. You just, you might as well just stay at home. And they're like, but you know, it's, you know, I'm like, no, that's not it. You're supposed to be in silence um, because that also brings you to the present moment. And that's, that's being spiritual, being here in the present moment, right here, right now. And that, that helps you be more intuitive for a million reasons. One, you're not worrying about the future or not trying to, trying to over obsess about the past. You're totally here in the moment for, for these 20, 30 minutes. And it helps your brain remember that like, okay, let's just, we can only do this present moment thing. And if you can do that, then your intuition spikes. But if you right, don't, right. I mean, if you're going on these walks, you're talking, you're on the phone, you're talking aloud, you're thinking, and you know, all these other things. It's like, how are you ever going to be intuitive? And if you're not going to be able to use your intuition, then you you don't feel spiritual. You don't connect to your own divineness and you don't you don't have oneness. So absolutely. I remember my dad would always drive, like he would never have the radio on any car that he ever had. He never used the radio. It was just always quiet. So it makes me think about that, like his quiet, he really liked the quiet time. Um, I even tell like people like make a little garden, 
like have something that you have to tend to because like we forget like so many people don't even prepare like their own meals or a couple of their own meals a week which is not where you and I have come from you know it's like midwest you have those family dinners meat potatoes veggie like learn where your food comes from, do it with the kids. And then afterward, you have something you have to tend to that forces you to go outside, connect with mother earth and learn something too. Yeah. Yeah. I was also, this makes me think about the term grounding. And I'm like, I don't know if anyone even knows that it is the original meaning of grounding and what they think. Well, grounding means if I'm in a bad mood, that I'm not in a bad mood anymore. I'm like, oh. <laughs> what about the sacredness of oneness and connecting to mother earth and reminding we have to take care of nature because it takes no so i know so much has been lost <laughs> so much so much so what else is kind of coming to your awareness that you're speaking about more like um, you know we came out of the pandemic mm -hmm. So the messages are definitely changing. What's coming through? Uh, that, that I would say over the last, it's been more than just three years, but mostly over the last three years, that if that it's felt like almost talking to a wall about all these topics, but now you have an opportunity. That's what's been coming through. So like, go, go talk about it. Um, one of the biggest things is is um, that throughout time, if we look around the world, there's been over 200 flood myths. And in all those stories, there's been somebody who comes to teach the people, this is the next step in your spiritual evolution. And what I've been getting is that it's sort of this role that everyone who identifies as a light worker has. So it wasn't just... Uh, Quetzalcoatl, it wasn't just Manu, it wasn't just Oannes, it wasn't just uh, Noah. Well, these are all the same, and they're all the same. Now it's you, though, and here. You are now, and everyone goes, well, that's too big. It's like, well, too bad. That's what you signed up for. Call yourself yeah. a light worker. You're, you're holding that mantle now. So you this is a giant responsibility. It isn't just, um, you know, what can I do to get more money, and can I spy on people with my abilities? It's, mm. it's how are you going to restore this that sustains the next centuries, plural. You know, um, everyone keeps thinking everything is external, even like the age of Aquarius is all external. It'll just happen. And it's like, no, you got to do something. You got to make it. You got to do it. Um, so that's been the last year strongly for me that I'm making more content about what has been lost and their responsibility. And I tried to tell them, well, not just it's your responsibility, but this is my opinion and how you get there. And that's, that's emotional IQ. If you can get that emotional IQ up and then give it to your family members and your friends, and hopefully they can give it away, that is the biggest step in this. Uh, yeah. So I just don't leave them hanging like, oh, you know, you're slacking. No, it's to simply, you know, identify the things that have wronged you and hurt but also what you've done to others that have not been so loving and what are you ignoring that are good about you you know there's a lot of people in my life including family they do so many like they have so many talents and they ignore they and i'm not good at this i'm not great at that i'm like yes you are. that's also the shadow self when you ignore the great things that you can contribute and that you do and you know i have a, a family member that's an awesome writer doesn't think he's a right, great writer or he's a great, you know, uh, on social media and is an, a great influencer for mental, emotional stuff. Doesn't think it like that's the shadow self too. You're ignoring. That's so true. Yeah. So you can't keep doing that. I guess I'm lucky that I was born a Leo because I'm always like, no, I'm great. You know, yeah. <laughs> I never went through that. So I don't know. Yeah. I can't relate. Me too. <laughs> Me too. Cause I'm an Aries. Yes. <laughs> Fire signs were like, what are you talking about? Of course I'm great at it. Right. You're like, I'm great at everything. <laughs> Which has gotten me into trouble as I'm like, oh. yes, yes. You got to balance it. That's where grounding is really good. Yes. Yes. So that's, that's why I walk so much in nature. Yes. <laughs> but um, so that's 
that's the biggest thing. I'm very lucky um, that 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 came to me. You know, when things come to you, or at least to me, it feels like time stops. People call it downloads, whatever, whatever term they want to use. Yeah. It feels like everything has stopped them in a whole different world. It's like, oh, but, um, you know, it, I think step one for me has been helping people realize in, in their own power, but now helping those who can do the same for others, helping them do that, you know. Um, so hopefully, hopefully I'll keep making content that speaks to that in a different way, you know, because some people will not resonate with one way, but maybe they will in a totally different way. But that's truly what my social media is devoted to. Uh, I could care less about the other stuff. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. And you're right. Like the action step is so important. And you're right. That part of the shadow, that's like, you're not good enough. Mm -hmm. oh, you better not put this out. You're right. That is part of the shadow self that we should be working on. Um, cause like when I get a download and I know I have to do a workshop or I have to put this information out, like I, I have to, Yeah. like, it's not even mine. Like they're giving it to me. They're like, you're going to be the voice. Go put it out. Mm -hmm. And usually it's easy. Yeah. I think it's easy for you and I, because it's not so much our creation. Like we know we're just kind of serving the play. So we don't even have to fracture our ego about it because mm -hmm. we're just, we're bringing the plate to the table. We didn't make the food. We're just dropping the plate off. But I think what happens is people attach their ego to their creations and with all the likes and everything, everyone's attached to the outcome versus like, just put it out. Just put it out. Don't even check what the outcome is. Just put it out. Yeah. I, um, cause there, I mean, it, there's so many things that you can buy likes. True. What does that mean? <laughs> I forget that. I forget that people do that. Yes. So it's like, you know, what does that even mean? But is there, you know, that's the thing. It, it's like the other part of the shadow self of how, how much of a positive impact can you make and should you make and, and you agree to. I really do think that Every light worker, especially looking at their birth charts, because I've seen this, yeah. they agreed to do that before they came here. Um, I used to hear a lot of light workers years ago. I'm talking about 20 years ago. They would say, you know, I'm here just to survive and go. And I'm like, what did, that never resonated with me. Yeah. You know, and I wonder, um, some of them have passed and they have visited me, which is pretty cool. And they said, you're right. <laughs> that is so cool. <laughs> and I'm like, like, are oh. you on your way back? <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, of course I've said, well, I wasn't right about everything, but I'm glad I was right about that. But it never yeah. resonated with me. I almost feel like I had to be there at those moments to hear that. You know, like I was there at that exact moment for them to say that so that I knew I had that ability to to take two things as you started this conversation with one ideology versus another. And my intuition said, no, that doesn't. And to face that and sit with that, um, because that's another thing, I guess you would say, when you ask me, what do I see? I don't see it. People keep using this word intuition, but all I see is impulse. Mm. I don't see intuition. I see impulse. Intuition is like when you say, when you're, when you, get this download and you make it and you know where it's coming from it's like something takes over and no matter what someone says to you you're like dana that's not gonna work dana no one cares you're doing it because you know it's just you feel it in your bones um i don't see that i see impulse and i see a lot of people say why didn't this work out why don't you know it's like well you haven't until you get that mental emotional thing down your emotional iq to improve a little bit it's going to be hard to, to really um, understand what that intuition is. It's a feeling. Well, it's absolutely discernment. So I feel like what happens when your emotional IQ goes up, you have discernment of what's the stream of consciousness coming through. Is it your inner child talking? Is it your inner teenager? Is it actually your wise self like intuition? But if yeah. you don't have that discernment, you're going off of feelings or facts. So, oh, I have this feeling. So I'm going to send this text right, right away. I'm going to send this paragraph text. It's a, it's my intuition. 
Right. And then everything goes, and it's like, no, that's an impulse. And yeah. if I review the text you sent, that's like your three-year-old self. So you're totally right. Like this teaching about that emotional IQ pairing with the intuition, that's a really good way to like message it and hopefully motivate people to work on that emotional IQ. Cause definitely probably since the existence of social media and the internet, I think that's maybe when the emotional IQ started really kind of tanking. Yeah. I think there's always been since I was born, um, I know psychology is kind of new. I mean, to be honest with all of us, right? I would say. Um, and that stigma has been very much there in the background. And then you saw the tanking going on the last few years with the pandemic. So it's like this combination of stigma. You know, I would have friends that used to say, I have a strong mind, I don't have a weak mind. It's like, Really, you're still you do everything unconsciously, so I'm not really sure where that. <laughs> I know I I heard one time um, this person was like, "Well, I just talk to my friends. I don't need to talk to like a therapist." Okay, when your life is perfect and everything's great, I'll be like, "That is awesome," but like right. your life that I'm looking at is not looking that great. So maybe you should try a professional. Yeah, well, and I would say it's like, how could they possibly? I mean, how would they know? I mean, do that does do these people know what is best for you? What will truly make you happy? They know things about you. They know your hobbies, maybe some of your passions, some of it. But how could they possibly navigate all these things for you? A yes. good friend, in my opinion, should hold space for you, but also remind you to try to get quiet with yourself and then see if your intuition speaks. Even my own family, I do that. You know, um, some, you know, I do it for my students. I do it for my clients. They don't always like it, but that's, you know, that is, that's the way that's, that's when someone's in your court, your, your, I think your responsibility as a friend is to be supportive. You know, like if something good happens to you, I say, yeah, awesome. I'm so happy for you, Dana. You're like, oh, that's a friend who's cheering me on. Not, uh, you know what, Dana, uh, how about you move? And you're like, what the, why? Yeah. That's not a friend. And that's not the role of a friend, really. Um, and the role of a friend is not a therapist. Like there's a lot of emotional dumping that goes on. And it does ruin the friendships. It's like friendships is it's like support, fun, joy. It should be like your light place where you plug into. Yeah. You know, but it does. It can get really heavy if that's the dynamic of the friendship, you know? Yeah. And then, but, and in most, you see a lot of friendships turn into just, um sort of a drama or dump, emotional dump fest and that's all the conversations are. <laughs> or they and then they go out and get drunk or something like that and then that's it that's pretty much it it's like oh no <laughs> you know when you have a friend that there's not a a like an insecurity or a jealousy or you know everyone i think everyone's destined to meet acquaintances of friends that aren't aren't cheerleaders like you know yeah. Oh, that's not going to work. Or that's a bad, yeah. it's like, Oh, I, whether, whatever, like whatever it is, let's, if someone's trying to get a new job or they're trying to do something new, don't, you don't have to offer your opinion. You just say, I'm happy for you. You Wait. don't have give advice. Like, yes. Like, yes. yes. But, um, you know. okay. Light workers that come to you that are stuck. So maybe they're stuck in a relationship or maybe the relationship is like so much drama. It sucks the life out of them or maybe it's career or maybe their family is doing it. What messages usually come through or what guidance comes through? Because there is this thing that I see over and over of like very powerful people, very wise people, very stuck in toxic situations. And you can see, I don't want to say wasting time because I don't believe in time, but it's like, they're so far away from their purpose because there's no energy left yeah. for that. Well, it's a lot. I mean, do have they looked at their own shadow self? Um, and sometimes, you know, you could do that to a degree, but not, I want to say fully, but sometimes there's 
you go you go well 10 years ago i did the shadow self stuff and i think i integrated it and then 10 years later like oh shit maybe i didn't you know <laughs> maybe it's yeah. you know, like oh that's oh i can't believe this affected me um so it, it, and you know sometimes they can be quote unquote happy uh but maybe they're holding on to ideologies of what their responsibility in life should be and, and yes. so they'll hold on to a job they'll hold on to a relationship because sometimes that is the shadow self still holding on to not having a discernment um guilt you know the other thing is too is people confuse nice for healthy i like where this is going i'm <laughs> laughing i'm like yes <laughs> like and so then they're surrounded by people who go well they're they're nice so there's that's synonymous with emotionally stable or emotionally you know relatively stable we'll say that right it's like that's not what that is at all <laughs> that's not what those are not synonymous that's a problem that's a big problem well i've been nice my whole life so i just assume the marriage i'm in and the job i have is I'm seeing life through these lenses because I'm categorized as nice and I'm reasonably intelligent. So therefore that equals everything else must be okay. It's like, no, the job is toxic. Your marriage is toxic. Your friends are toxic, your family's. <laughs> but, you know, so there's a lot of that. Um, so like, okay, an example, this is classic. We see this all the time. A couple staying together till the kids go off to college. We hear about it all the time. And I tell people, that is so damaging. Leave now. If you know yeah. you're going to leave, start it now. I agree. Again, they think that's being nice. They think that's being protective of the kids, of the family dynamic. Like, what comes to you about that situation? Sometimes. And then other times, I most of the time, I would say, I, I can't say 99%. I think they use that as an excuse because um, a lot of people rather have company and not be alone than to be alone and be happy, you know, because they don't think that's possible because they've never been alone by themselves. And they don't know how to do the work to be happy alone. So yeah. they'll, they'll use the kids as a, as a crutch. And that, that's, so they're not alone. So there's, there's a society stigma about not being married and being married and all, so they don't want to go through that. They don't want to be alone when they're old. And then going the judgment from the friends, the judgment, family, and yeah, society. The judgment. And then there's finances. You know, there's that. So they, they'll they say kids. It's and like, this goes back to what you said in the beginning, the dirty work. Mm -hmm. Because to leave a situation to be condemned, possibly, of mm -hmm. leaving a situation, that means you have to go inside. You have to work on your shadow. You have to be comfortable with the unknown or at least comfortable facing it. Anytime you flip the script, anytime you switch up the journey, yeah, you know you have you you don't know what's on the other side. You might have a glimpse of what's on the other side, but you really don't know. So you really do have to be brave. Very brave. Um, it's easier to be. It's easier to not go through it and be a little shallow, and then be a little selfish. That's a lot easier than. There was a quote someone said like it takes courage to change people's hearts but it also takes courage to change your own heart um yeah but i think it has to be action before you get there for some you actually so do have you, to, what's do that you believe love is a choice uh, i do you know yeah. years ago in two i would say 2001 or 2002 i met a woman she was a psychic she was a leo <laughs> uh, and but she was the strongest person I've ever met in my life at the time yeah. and I was totally captivated by that you know and I was again Midwest Chicago that doesn't those two are not synonymous like no I was taught you know lots of friends you know relationship marriage long-term job picket white fence you know two point <laughs> yeah so I met her but I was totally drawn like the time stopped and I'm like, what do I, what do I have to do to be this? She's like, well, you have to be, you have to be strong enough to be alone first. I'm like, what's that like? And all my friends were like, this is dumb, stupid. Don't listen to this lady. But I knew in my heart of hearts, she was right. 
And so uh, that's that's where I began um, to develop my own self. But I was mm-hmm. I was drawn to it, whereas most people are like, I don't want to touch that. Yeah. And, and my friends were known as some of the you know toughest people you ever meet, supposedly. And right. but I, I look at them now and go, my gosh, they they were terrified of this. They were terrified of this whole emotional. Um, and then, you know, I had to look at what I was doing to society, what I did to others, what they did to me, both everything. Yeah. And, but I, I, it was like, um, it was like, you know, they say taking, was it the red pill or the blue pill in the matrix? So going down yes, the yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I was, I was like, no, this is it. This is my Holy grail moment. Like, you know, um, so that's where it began for me. And I've never, I, I'll never forget it. I probably can't even get it to the date and time where it, it really happened for me. But so when I see others, I understand it um, conceptually, but I, I really can't relate totally. But I have so many people that I meet that's it's like kryptonite for them. This kind yes. of totally kryptonite. Yeah. Yes. And like chasing the feeling, mm. chasing the feeling, chasing the feeling. Okay. Now these people are together five, seven years. The initial feelings have faded, which is natural. And then that's when the love is action should kick in. Yeah. But then, like you said, that's the dirty word. Yeah. And if, if, if they've never developed any sort of emotional intelligence and they have a relationship, it's, it's just going to be that physical, uh, chemical kind of thing. Right. and so what do you expect after five to seven years if you have nothing deeper? You know, so it's like, it's kind of amazing a lot that even some of them can last. <laughs> but, you know, um, I think you'll start to see a shift, hopefully before I leave the planet. Yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, I kind of say, well, I, when I see that, I kind of say, well, I, I kind of expected that anyways. But Right. Totally. So any last pieces of wisdom that you want to throw out there? Yes. Uh, please, everyone, do your shadow work and integrate. <laughs> yeah. it's wishful thinking. I would say, though, um, me and you, I think you would agree, we have that, what I talk about, that mantle that we wear as light workers. that is the same as these other stories that came thousands of years ago. I think Osiris was it, Isis, Oannes, Quetzalcoatl, Kukulkan, Manu in India. There's 200 flood myths. They're all the same story. Uh, these people come who are knowledge and spirituality. Even the Amazon people say, our people didn't come here. They came from somewhere else and they gave us ayahuasca. Yeah. And I, I think that was supposed to be the, like, oh, the on switch. That was it. But it was people like me and you, and there's mil. I think there's millions of us, me and you, on the earth right now. Yeah, you're not like you're not different. Like you have, it may not turn into a podcast where where you're headed, or you may not be a, a psychic medium, or you know, there's something that you'll do that is within the bounds of light work. Or you don't. It doesn't matter how much money or little you make with that. But I think if you can touch the people around you and, and change them whether it's your own kids or your acquaintances or friends and maybe some strangers, uh, that is a big chunk of why you're here. So let's, can we stop like skipping that and saying that's not me and I'm not worthy. And, you know, uh, I wish I can give them a Thor's hammer, you know, cause if you hold the Thor's hammer, that means you're worthy, <laughs> Yes. but it also means it's your responsibility now. Yes. I do see it. Inspiration goes a long way. Like when you're just in that truth, like in your life Mm -hmm. and you're just standing next to someone that's carrying that light, like that's the feeling is inspiring. So you're right. Like if people could own their power, their gifts, their authentic truth, it would be different. To brighten, not to, not to, uh, I want to say cheat life, but it's not for shortcuts. Yes. Yes. It's still work. You still got to clean up the messes. Yes. I think that's the takeaway. Uh, for both of us I think I love that no you have some teachings coming up right you're going to have some classes did you want to talk about that sure yes so I I I teach year round uh, usually at the beginning of the season so April begins a new round of classes uh 
I'll teach mediumship, psychic development, and I have my own healing course. I have my own healing modality called color healing. Um, so I teach year round. It's always via Zoom for anyone around the world to join in. All they have to do is go to my website, markthemidwestmedium.com, and contact me. Uh, please don't be like, oh, I don't think I can do that. If you're interested, you probably, there's probably a big reason why you're interested in something. So uh, give it, give it a shot. I think uh, I'm sure you run into that too. Yes. I don't know if I will be able to like actually produce something. You will. I know. I tell people, I'm like, I'm not special. Like I am not special. We're the same. I always remind people. It's so true. There's a reason why you're drawn to a topic or subject matter. So yes. Follow those hunches, please. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for doing this with me today. Thank you. Thank um, I'm you. sure we'll do it again soon. Yes. I love chatting with you. Love chatting with you too.